Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to teach you about bronchiolitis obliterans. Let's go into the video. Bronchiolitis obliterans is a chronic obstructive lung disease of the bronchioles and the smaller airways. It is a histopathological diagnosis, meaning that you have to perform a biopsy for confirmation. Pathogenesis It occurs as a result of an insult to the lower respiratory tract, which leads to an inflammation and fibrosis of the smaller airways. Sometimes there is complete or partial obstruction of airway lumen, leading to atelectasis. The characteristic feature is epithelial damage resulting in abnormal repair. Parenchyma is not involved in bronchiolitis obliterans. Compared to bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, parenchyma is involved here. This is due to extension of inflammation into the alveoli with proliferation of fibroblast. Etiology Bronchiolitis obliterans occurs after an infection with adenovirus type 3, 7, 21, influenza, parainfluenza, RSV, measles, varicella, mycoplasma pneumonia infections. And this is common in pediatric age group as well as people belonging to Asian descent. Bronchiolitis obliterans can also occur post transplantation after lung transplantation or heart transplantation, bone marrow transplantation. Connective tissue disorders like juvenile idiopathic arthritis, SLE, Soren syndrome. Inhalation of toxic flume of nitric oxide, ammonia, diacetyl flavoring, chronic hypersensitive, hypersensitivity pneumonitis caused by avian antigen or mold, aspiration of stomach contents, foreign body, drugs like penicillamine, cocaine, and Steven Johnson syndrome. Clinical features include fever, cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, distress, cyanosis. After a period of having these symptoms, patient tends to improve and at this point we get confused this with pneumonia, bronchitis or bronchiolitis. After that, there is a progression uh, to a severe form and during that uh, new symptoms will develop like uh, sputum production or wheeze. Physical examination is non-specific. Chest x-ray usually shows a normal uh, while it can also show hyperlucency or patchy infiltrate. Swire Jameson syndrome uh, that is unilateral hyperlucent lungs may be present. Pulmonary function test is usually variable. Exercise testing shows reduced exercise tolerance. Ventilation perfusion scan shows a typical moth eaten appearance. HRCT shows mosaic pattern of hyperlucency, air trapping and bronchiectasis. Physical and radiological signs can wax and wean over a period of time, over a period of weeks or months. Uh, man, uh, open lung biopsy and transbronchial biopsy is the best investigation to confirm the diagnosis. Treatment. There is no definitive treatment for bronchiolitis obliterans. However, we can use corticosteroids. Immunomodulator therapy has been uh, successful in immuno uh, in post lung transplant patients. Supported therapy with oxygen and antibiotics if secondary infection is present. Azithromycin is found to be effective in bronchiolitis obliterans. And whenever there is an association with GERD, we have to treat it. Bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, steroids can be used up to one year as a first line treatment for symptomatic and progressive disease. In asymptomatic or non-progressive ones, uh, just observation is enough. Prognosis, bronchiolitis obliterans tends to be severe once progression starts. Rapid deterioration can occur and patient would die within weeks. 
most non transplant patients survive with chronic disability bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia has a better prognosis compared to bronchiolitis obliterans when it has progressed in bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia relapse can occur if treatment duration is less than 1 year idiopathic bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia has a better prognosis compared to that of a progressive one that's all guys thanks for watching the video if you like the video please subscribe to my channel